हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे माय टॉपिक इज सरगासम सरगासम बिलोंग्स टू द ग्रुप ब्राउन अलगा पॉपुलरली कॉल्ड सीवीड्स द ब्राउन अलगा फॉर्म्स द डिवीजन फियोफाइटा एंड कंस्टिट्यूट अ डिस्टिंक टेक्सोनॉमिक ग्रुप ड्यू टू देयर मॉर्फोलॉजिकल एनाटॉमिकल एंड फिजियोलॉजिकल कॉम्प्लेक्सिटीज द ग्रुप इंक्लूड्स 265 जनरा एंड रफली अबाउट 1500 स्पीशीज वर्ल्ड वाइड With few exceptions the members of Phyophyta are marine most of the Phyophycin members grow in the intertidal region and upper littoral regions in cold temperate waters particularly in the northern hemisphere <laughs> scientific classification of sargassum it belongs to empire eukaryota kingdom chromista subkingdom chromobiota infra kingdom heterocontia phylum Heterocontophyta class Phyophyce order Fucales and family Sargassi Sargassum is a genus of generally planktonic free floating macro alga it's named for the atlantic ocean sargasso sea which hosts a large amount of free floating mass of seaweeds particularly sargassum natans and sargassum plutans according to alga base there are 866 species names in the database at present of which 349 have been flagged as currently accepted taxonomically most of the species are generally attached to rocks along coasts in temperate regions the alga is most conspicuous in tropical and subtropical waters ranging from mid littoral to sub littoral zones most of the species reproduce sexually except sargassum natans and sargassum plutans which reproduce only by fragmentation habitat and distribution sargassum is believed to be the native of japan and is now believed that it has a wider distribution than previously thought the transplantation of oyster seeds from infected regions of europe and the transportation of fertile fronds by currents or by boats or ships are believed to be the most likely source of inoculation to new areas sargassum is highly tolerant to environmental parameters such as desiccation full sunlight and variations in salinity and temperature this enables it to occupy a broad range of habitats from the upper intertidal mainly rocky pools to the subtidal and substrata from exposed rocks to zostera marina that's eel grass beds sargassum is commonly found in the beach drift near sargassum beds where they are also known as gulf wheat numerous species of sargassum are distributed throughout the temperate and tropical oceans of the world where they generally inhabit shallow water rocky and coral reefs however the genus may be best known for its planktonic that's free floating species two species sargassum natan and sargassum plutans have become holopelagic reproducing vegetatively and never attached to the sea floor during their life cycle the species of sargassum are commonly met in tropical seas of southern hemisphere the species are also common along the coasts of australia japan West Indies, Florida and India. The most common centers of occurrence of the species is supposed to be southern hemisphere. In India, the species are commonly along the eastern, western and southern coasts at Okha, Dwarka and other places. Vegetative structure of sargassum. The alga has two distinct parts. The perennial dark brown basal axis and the light colored annual primary lateral species of this genus of alga may grow to a length of several meters they are generally brown olive or dark green in color the plant body resembles the seed plants as it's diploid perennial erect and bushy with a bilateral or radial symmetry the main body is differentiated into irregular to solid hold fast cylindrical stem like main axis called stipe and flattenedly flat laterals are fronds the stipe may be short a few cm high to long up to 30 cm or more cylindrical and branched the branching is monopodial 
The main axis bears primary laterals, that is branches of unlimited growth, which give rise to secondary laterals, that is branches of limited growth. Some secondary laterals become flat, leaf-like, and act as photosynthetic organs. These leaf-like laterals possess minute pores on the surface called cryptostomata. The leaves are sometimes replaced by golden brown colored stalked air bladders called as nematocysts. These bladders are swollen, berry-like, which keep the frond afloat by providing buoyancy. In the upper part of the plant body, the axis of the laterals bears fertile and sterile receptacles. Embedded in the fertile hermaphrodite receptacles are unisexual conceptacles, which bear ugonia and anthridia. Anatomy of sargassum. Anatomically, the thallus is differentiated into a mucilaginous cuticle, epidermis or meristoderm, which is meristematic in nature, and peripheral layers of compact, columnar, thin-walled, parenchymatous cortical cells, which have abundant chromatophores and fucosine vesicles. Inner to cortex is the zone of medulla, which consists of narrow, elongated, thick-walled cells, which serve the function of conduction. The internal structure of leaf resembles the main axis. The epidermis is followed by assimilatory cells with numerous plastids. The cryptoblasts opened outside by cryptostomata are also found in the epidermis of leaf. These cryptoblasts are flask-like bodies with multicellular hairs arising from the base. These hairs are believed to be respiratory and absorb nutrition from the water. Cellular structure. The cell wall has an inner cellulosic layer and an outer gelatinous layer of pectic substances, which possess mucilage of alginic acid and phocinic acid. The cell wall is distinguished into two fractions, a fibrillar part that gives the wall its strength and an amorphous part in which the fibrils are embedded. Chloroplasts are discoid, golden brown colored and contain chlorophyll A, C1 and C2 as the main photosynthetic pigments and fucosanthine and beta carotene as accessory pigments. Individual cells may contain several chloroplasts. The alga owe its color to the accessory pigment fucosanthine. These chloroplasts bear pear-shaped stalked pyrenoids to their inner sides. The chloroplast DNA is organized in a ring-shaped nucleide. Vesicles containing reserve food material are formed in the cytoplasm near the pyrenoid. In chloroplasts, the thylakoids lie in stake. The chloroplast is surrounded not only by its own double membrane, but also by a fold of endoplasmic reticulum so that in all there are four membranes around it. The most important reserve product of photosynthesis is chrysolaminarin which is a beta-1,3 linked glucane and lies in solution in special vacuoles. Mentol is also found as the reserve material. The cells also contain various small, highly refractive colorless vesicles called fucosin vesicles, abundant in metabolically active cells. These vesicles contain an acidic fluid, pheophysine, tannins are flora tannins. The flora tannins are readily oxidized in the air leading to the formation of brown or black pigment, pheophyne. These vesicles actually originate from plastids where the tannins are produced then ooze out to cytoplasm. Only reproductive cells are flagellate. The flagellate cells have a typical photoreceptor apparatus consisting of a swelling on the posterior flagellum. The long anterior flagellum is pleuronematic, bearing tripartite mastigonemes, which are formed in endoplasmic reticulum cisterni. The Golgi body lie in their forming phases appressed to the nuclear envelope. Reproduction in sargassum. Sargassum and other fucoid alga have an animal-like life cycle 
with no alteration of generation. Look upon this as an exception to the general pattern found in the plant kingdom. The plant body of sargassum is a diploid sporophyte. It does not multiply asexually by means of spores. Instead, it reproduces by vegetative method and the formation of sex organs. Vegetative reproduction. Fragmentation is the only known method of reproductive vegetation. In case of sargassum natans, it is very prolific. Each fragment develops into a new plant. Sexual reproduction. Sargassum is characterized by a diplontic life cycle in which meiosis takes place just before the formation of the gametes. Here both the tiny motile male gamete and the large non-motile female gamete are produced in unilocular structures. The sexual reproduction is oogamous and involves the fusion of motile sperm or male gamete with a non-motile ohm or female gamete. They are born inside anthridia and oogonia respectively. The spores germinate inside the sporangia to produce gametes. The sex organs are produced inside special cavity called conceptacles. The conceptacles are found inside small finger-like branchlets called receptacles. The plants are either monoecious or dioecious. In monoecious forms, the anthridia and ugonia can be in the same or different conceptacles. In case of dioecious forms, the male receptacles are smooth and the female ones appear spinous. Development of conceptacles. The conceptacles develop from a superficial meristodermal cell which becomes much more prominent. Surrounding cells of this meristodermal cell divide rapidly, sinking down this prominent cell deep into a flask-like cavity. By reaching at the base of this flask-like cavity, the prominent cells divide transversely into an upper tongue cell and a lower basal cell. The tongue cell degenerate while the basal cells divide anticlinally and periclinally into two rows of curved cells. These layers represent fertile sheet. The anthridia and ugonia develop on this fertile sheet from the cells of the upper tire. Anthridia. A large number of anthridia develop in each male conceptacle. They are born on the lower branch of paraphysis. The first anthridium is born at the tip of a three-celled filament which arises from a cell of the fertile layer. The basal cell remains at the level of fertile layer. The middle one is known as stock cell. The upper or anthridial cell develops into an anthridium. The anthridium is wide in outline. Internally, the anthridium contains initially a single diploid nucleus and a few chromatophores. The diploid nucleus divides meiotically and then mitotically to form 64 haploid nuclei. The chromatophores also divide and ultimately get placed near the nuclei in one to one ratio. The cytoplasm is cleaved and the contents of the anthridium get divided into 64 haploid protoplasts. Each such protoplast transforms itself into a single sperm or anthrocyte. The wall of the mature anthridium becomes mucilaginous. It breaks its connections with the paraphysis and comes out. Here the wall dissolves and the sperms are released in seawater. A sperm is a pear-shaped biflagellate structure of pale brown color. The flagella are unequal and inserted laterally. The anterior shorter flagellum is of tinsel type while the posterior longer flagellum of whiplash type. Ugonia. Only a few ugonia are born in a conceptacle. They are formed directly from the cells of the fertile layer. Some of the cells of the upper tire of the fertile layer protrude out and function as ugonial initial. It divides transversely into a lower stock cell and an upper ugonial proper cell. The stock cell gets pressed between the growing ugonial cell 
are ogonium and the cells of the fertile layer. The young ogonium contains a conspicuous diploid nucleus, dense cytoplasm and a number of oil droplets. The diploid nucleus undergoes meiosis and mitosis to produce eight haploid nuclei. Seven of them usually degenerate while the functional haploid nucleus enlarges and becomes centrally placed. The protoplasts of the ugonium then function as a single cell or oocephal. The mature ugonium is globular or ellipsoidal in outline. It has thick three layered wall and a single ohm or oocephal. The three wall layers are outer exochite, middle mesochite, and inner endochite. The middle wall layer or mesochite imbibes water and becomes mucilaginous. Its swelling breaks the exochite. The ugonium is slowly extruded to the outside of the ostiole. It however remains attached to its original position by means of mucilage threads formed by the mucilage mesochite. Later on, the endochite also ruptures and the egg is liberated in the water still attached with mucilage threads. Fertilization the ohm of sargassum are not shed in sea. They remain covered over by the gelatinized wall of the ugonia and are held in position just outside the ostiole by means of a mucilaginous stalk made of mesochitin. They attract a large number of sperms freely swimming in water. Several anthrocytes approach the egg. With the help of these anthrocytes, the egg may rotate in water. The number of sperm attach themselves to the gelatinous sheath of the womb by means of their anterior flagella. The posterior flagellum continues to leash. One of the lucky sperm penetrates the mucilaginous covering and fuses with the womb. The other sperm swims away. Now the fertilized womb has a diploid nucleus and is called a zygote. Now the germination of zygote. After fertilization, the zygote continues to grow on the parent for several days before dropping to ocean floor. The enveloping mucilage protects them from environmental stresses. Their large size also allows them to settle rapidly and the well-developed rhizides adhere quickly to the substrate. This results in the germlings settling near the parent within 3 meters where conditions are likely to be favorable. The zygote germinates directly without any resting period. It begins its germination while surrounded by the gelatinous sheath, drive it from the ugonial wall and still attach it to the interior of the conceptacle by means of mucilage stock. After some time, the gelatinous sheath dissolves and the zygote in its early stages of germination falls down, the fertilized egg elongates and divides transversely into two cells. The lower cell divides transversely and develops into rhizides, which later become aseptic. The upper cell divides and redivides periclinally and anticlinally. Vertical or longitudinal walls appear in the terminal region, which then shows differentiation of outer and inner cells followed by the distinction of mystoderm, cortex, and medulla. Simultaneously, a three-site apical cell appears at the tip of the germling. It produces the typical thallus. Dispersal of gametes. Gametes are usually released during or just after the spring tide. The timing may be determined by hydrostatic pressure or more probably by the light of the moon as observed by Fletcher in 1975. Gametes are released in cycles of 13 days instead of all simultaneously, increasing the possibility that some of them will encounter favorable tides and conditions. Germlings are pear-shaped, enabling the rhizides to land first. Rhizides stick within 48 hours. Germlings lose their ability to adhere over time in connection with declining mucopolysaccharides level. After 18 days, half 
can still stick and after 49 days none can stick. Germlings can grow on kelp, but they fall off before they reach a height of 3 cm and can no longer re-adhere. Individuals that become free floating can survive in the water column indefinitely. Alternate to dispersal mechanism. Fertile branches break off from the hold fast and float away. When the germlings are released a long distance from the parent, they do not have to compete with their own relatives and can settle in new territory. The combination of these two dispersal mechanisms proves to be an effective system for global spread. Development of morphology or morphogenesis of sargassum. The thallus structure, that stem, branches, and leaves, developed by the activity of a three-sided apical cell. The thallus consists of three compact tissues, called for convenience the epidermal, cortical, and conducting tissues. The lateral consists of only thin wall cells in the leaves, but in mature stems contains both thick and thin walled elements. Both the conceptacles and cryptostomata originate in a single flask shaped initial cell which develops the entire structure. The first division of the initial cell results in two unlike segments, a large lower cell which develops the walls of the conceptacle and cryptostomata and an upper cell, the tongue cell, which remains inactive, divide to form a short filament or degenerate. The initial cell is apparently the tongue cell, a product of the true initial cell. The conceptacle and cryptostomata are undoubtedly homologous structures. Every stage of development in both structures is the same, from the appearance of the similar initial cells to the development of the paraphyses in the cryptostomata and sexual organs in the conceptacle. The paraphyses are developed basically by the division of the lowermost cell in each structure. Supermatocysts or their degenerate representatives occur in some cryptostomata. Such conditions indicate that cryptostomata have been derived from conceptacles whose sexual organs have become sterile. The supermatocysts develop as in fucasi and finally producing 64 sperms which are discharged from a partly terminal and partly lateral vent. The sister cells of an oocyst does not become a stock and consequently the oocyst is an embedded structure. The oocyst normally gives rise to but one egg. The nucleus of the oocyst accordingly becomes the nucleus of the egg. The entire oocyst of sargassum, unlike other genera of the fucasi which have been studied, is discharged with its enclosed egg. Germination of the egg takes place while it is attached to the surface of the plant by the mucilaginous wall which surrounds it. This segmentation results first in a many-celled undifferentiated ellipsoidal sporling. Rhizides develop late at one end of the multicellular sporling with no apparent relation to gravity or other stimulus. Now, economic importance of sargassum. Sargassum seaweeds are eaten by people and used fish bait in basket traps, animal feed as fertilizers, as insect repellents. Various species are used as medicines for ailments ranging from children's fever, cholesterol problems, cleansing the blood, skin ailments, and as flavoring agents and also as fertilizers. Alginates are cell wall forming materials found in sargassum. Sodium alginate finds its application as a stabilizer and as an emulsifier. It was once used in textile printing industry. Being non-polar, sodium alginate has led to the development of high quality fibers which can be used in the textile industry. Sodium alginate fibers are used to weave bandage for larger wounds and burns and for making firefighters fireproof clothing. People living alongside the seashores of Japan often eat fresh sargassum seaweeds as vegetables. 
Sargassum has been used as a topical medicine to treat goiters in some provinces of China. Sargassum seaweeds guarantee a continuous supply of dietary iodine. In addition, sargassum seaweeds promote the excretion of urine and reduce edema. It is also prescribed to elevate pains from swollen testes and hernia. Thank you very much.